Iron Maiden. They're of course legends, everyone knows them. They're the heavy metal pioneers of uh, British heavy metal, of course. And today I'm gonna review their sixth studio album, which is Somewhere in Time, requested by Rockdo. Um, yeah, this is actually a really interesting album because, well, everyone loves the first seven studio albums by Iron Maiden. You cannot go wrong with that. I still think they're, they're really good um, after that with uh, Brave New World and uh, Dance of Death and A Matter of Life and Death. And Book of Souls, of course, the new one and um, Final Frontier. I think those are really good albums, so check them out. They, they of course are not as great as the early records. You cannot, uh, you cannot beat the, you cannot beat the classics, and this is definitely a high, a highlight in their uh, discography. Somewhere in time is uh, still really, uh, it, it still has its roots in the heavy metal genre. It still is a heavy metal record, so don't worry that our main is gonna sell out or something because they don't ever. Um, but this is still a record that is a bit different than the first five records because those were mainly um, British heavy metal. Like you know Iron Maiden, a lot of bass, a lot of um, great vocals by then uh, Paul Diano of course on the first two records and then on the other three we have Bruce Dickinson on the number of the beast, peace of mind, and power slave, arguably the best records in their entire discography. And then we get somewhere in time, which is a bit different than those first uh, five records. And I have to say that I like this change. I um, I prefer the the first five records. I have to say, but but still, this record comes really close to that, and I like that Iron Maiden is switching it up here. They uh, they are using synthesizers on there and a lot of things that were used in the 80s so i i think this change is really well implemented and some people may not like this change but i still think it is a it, it is a good change for iron maid to uh, change it up a bit uh, so the album contains eight songs and we have two singles from the from the record which are wasted years and strange in a strange land which i both really love um, yeah, then we get to the actual track listing. Uh, Cut Somewhere in Time is the first track. It is seven, uh, almost seven and a half minutes long, and I just love this song. I love the driving force of, of um, uh, fuck, how the guitar is called again? Uh, Dave Murray, and no, I don't know the second one. Dave Murray and Adrian Smith are uh, the guitars of the band, and they just have this foundering main guitar riff that just goes through the entire song and it is just so lively it is so great to listen to it is such a energetic guitar riff together with the bass of steve harris that keeps it all together it is just such a great track throughout throughout the entire runtime we have this amazing guitar and bass attack from from the guys that just blends perfectly together with the with the drum snare from uh, Nico McBrain, who uh, keeps the pace, and um, Bruce Dickinson just yeah he just screams a lot on this uh, on this record, especially on this track. I really love the opening song of this record, "Cut Somewhere in Time," and yeah, it is actually my favorite track of this record. Uh, I really love "Cut Somewhere in Time." Probably top 10 for me. It is really a great track. Listen to it for yourself. It is also one of the longest ones, so. I just love this track, man. It is a great opening track. Uh, then we get Waste of Years, the second track, which was for a while my favorite song, but it is the the shortest song, or no, it, it actually isn't the shortest. It is the second shortest, but this is the most commercial song of the of, of the record. That is why I loved it first, but now I love the first song more. But uh, Waste of Years still a classic uh, with, with the iconic music video where um, they're operating Eddie, I believe. Really strange music video, but I really love it. Uh, the guitar solo by Adrian uh, Smith and Dave Murray. I cannot figure out who, who did the guitar solo of those two, but I'm just gonna say the guitar solo is tremendous to listen to, um, where Nico, Mc, Nico McBrain gets the breakdown and he just fills those drums up. 
it, um, I, I don't know if that's a term, but I'm I'm gonna go with it. Yeah, his drum fills on there with the solo. Um, yeah, it, it and makes uh, makes and meets something like that. Um, just the perfect combination of perfect drums and the guitar solo are really really uh, great to listen to. A really perfect combination, and the song is just a classic, man. Love it. Uh, sea of Madness is a bit of a uh, somber song. It is uh, more bass driven by Steve Harris, so the song is uh, a bit similar to the opening of God Somewhere in Time. Um, still a really great song, and Iron Maiden proves again that they can uh, change the pace if they uh, well to be diverse to um, to to keep it diverse. So they have Sea of Madness, which is uh, way more softer, way more mellow in tone. Uh, Heaven Can Wait is a bit, a uh, bit of the same, where, um, where, where, where actually uh, Cut Somewhere in Time and Sea of Madness are a bit combined. We have Heaven Can Wait, a bit of those uh, two combined. You guys Heaven Can Wait. Uh, this is a really diverse song, really great to uh, close out the, the first side of the record. Really loved it. Uh, I especially love the. The cries, the screams of uh, Bruce Dickinson, who says, "Have a guy wait, have a guy wait," and yeah, just um, the 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 band, the instrumentals backing him up is really great. Really love this uh, closing uh, closing song on side one. Uh, then we get the loneliness of the long distance runner, which is also a pretty catchy song. Um, yeah, best title ever, right? Uh, this title is really absurd, but uh, the song just delivers it, opens up side two, really perfect. Uh, written by uh, Steve Harris, actually most of the songs are written by Steve Harris. Uh, also by Adrian Smith and yeah, Dave Murray, who also wrote it some songs, but mostly Harris of course. Uh, yeah, this is a really a, a driving song. A song. It is um, a bit similar to Heaven Can Wait, it is one of those more mellow songs, so we get a bit of a continuation with that, uh, with with that thing, with that uh, story, w w with that sound. I have to say, um, yeah, great song. A bit of an absurd title, but it just delivers, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Strange in a Strange Land is really catchy. Um, yeah, th this song just delivers. It really shows how Iron Maiden can make a 80s record with the synthesizers and the beats from the 80s, but it isn't really cheesy because they uh, do it really good. They do it actually uh, quite perfect. So there we are. Really catchy song. A bit similar to Wasted Years in how catchy and commercial it is, but in a good way. Uh, so yeah, great song. Uh, Deja Vu is, in my opinion, the weakest song of the record. It is also the the, the shortest one clocking in at 4 minutes and 55 seconds. Uh, yeah, this song for me is mostly instrumental, so we don't have a lot of um, uh, vocal delivery by Bruce Dickinson. And uh, this is also written by Dave Murray. And I'm not saying he is a bad um, he that that he is a he is a bad songwriter, but it is definitely the weakest track. Um, it is mostly uh, uh, very quiet. This song. It's. Uh, it, it, yeah, in, in my opinion, it is between two of the greatest songs of the, this entire record, so that is also um, hurting it a bit. But it, it is still a really uh, good track to listen to. It is only between two of the best Maiden songs ever made, so that is really difficult. And speaking of best Iron Maiden songs ever made, we have uh, Ex Alexander the Great. This is probably my second favorite of the of the record. This song is really epic. It is also the longest song of the record. And I love Maiden because they, uh, well, one of the many reasons I love this band is that they save the best for last. And although I said Cut Somewhere in Time is my favorite, it is, but Alexander the Great is the most epic one. It is the, um, it tells the biggest story, just uh, saying that Alexander the Great is giving his empire to his son, but um, his son wants a bigger empire because he's, he's a fucking spoiled brat, right? Stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that is a pretty interesting story, and uh, yeah, then the band is just singing about Alexander the Great and um, how this has uh, how how this has uh, is become, or how this would become the ending 
of the record me metaphorically speaking and of course sto the story so the story is pretty uh, interesting pretty historical uh yeah and the song itself is really epic i love the song uh, and it is a great closer for this really epic um this epic album i really love this record uh, alexander the great is arguably a masterpiece it is a great track uh, it, yeah the reason it, it is just so epic and Maiden always saves the best for last so I really love that about Iron Maiden my rating for this record is a uh, what am I going to give it I'm going uh, I'm gonna give it a 9.2 I really love the record and I think you should check this out this is definitely a highlight in Iron Maiden's discography although not my favorite Iron Maiden record it is still way up there as one of their best and an all-time classic I hope you have enjoyed this album review. Let me know what you think about Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden Summer in Time. I think it is a great record. I loved it. Uh, the album cover is a bit strange though. I'm not. Yeah, that is Eddie, but I'm not sure what it is about. It is a bit futuristic, but there we are. Um, if you know it, then let me know it. But if you don't, who cares, right? I love Maiden, and the album covers are a bit ridiculous, but that is what makes them fun. The ridiculousness and just how crazy these guys can be. Uh, and that is what makes them great. Just how crazy and fun they are. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this album review. Let me know what you think about it somewhere in time. Do you think it is their best record? Do you think it is the worst record? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you have enjoyed it. Let me know your favorite main records, your favorite songs. And take care.